Welcome back, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Well, with the coronavirus, unfortunately, there's not really much we can do, right? Um, I mean, honestly, if you think about it, there's no sports to watch. There's nowhere to really go shopping because people are buying way too much toilet paper, which that still doesn't really make sense to me. But hey, it is what it is. Um, so there's really not a lot of things you can do other than uh, what I'm doing, which is uh, enjoying bourbon. So, all right, let's come back. So I asked you guys in the middle of the week, I said, hey, you know, there's two different bourbons, or actually really three. No one voted for the, the Remus, by the way, the Remus repeal. Not one single vote. But uh, I asked you guys for your feedback and said, hey, need help. You know, should we review uh, I.W. Harper 15 or Knob Creek H 12 years, right? The votes were very, very close. So thank you guys all for voting. I really appreciate it, folks on YouTube, folks uh, on Instagram as well. Very, very close. However, there was only one winner. And the winner came in as... Knob Creek age 12 years. Let's take a look at that bottle, right? All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Knob Creek. So again, I think if you go back, let's call it episode 36, I think it was, right? Um, I did a, a review, if you will, on Knob Creek twice barrel rye. And if you recall, I said that that bottle, I enjoyed it so much, I needed to go out and buy a second bottle because it was running really, really low. And as you can tell, I am a man of my words. Right, I, I did go out and buy another bottle. I really did enjoy it. But so I won't give a ton of history about Knob Creek. Uh, please again watch episode uh, 36 for a history about Knob Creek. But uh, very high level, Knob Creek is a um, a sub brand of uh, Jim Beam. So one of the sub brand products started like in the early 1990s, and throughout the years have been you know you know creating really good fine crafted bourbon. Um, so what's unique about this one is that again, of course, they're bringing back the age statements. Uh, so this one again is age 12 years. It comes in right at a hundred proof. And from a price standpoint, this one, you can find it. The MSRP is about 60 bucks. Uh, so you find it about $60. Um, it's not really too, too hard to find. I mean, I've went out, I've been, you know, out and about, um, you know, trying to find this new special release and, uh, every liquor, not every, but I should say maybe out of three or four liquor stores, I've seen it 50% of the time. So that's not bad. And that's part of my normal bourbon hunting. I go out and about and so forth, right? I've seen it half of the time at half of the stores. Typically you're going to find it, I would say at the stores that carry, you know, above and beyond the standard, like, you know, your Woodford Reserve and, um, things of that nature, right? Like stores that really have like a deep selection. You're going to find it there, right? So, um, and the last thing I'll say before I get started, I, I really can't just say, you know what, just because I love Twice Barrel Rye and I gave that one a buy statement, I'm not going to say that this is going to be a buy because if you go back to, uh, I forget the episode number, but High West Distillery, uh, they produce Yippie Kaye, right? And I tried that one, that was a no buy. And then one of someone who watches the channel, I don't know if it was Paul Munoz or Carino or Cleveland Kid, maybe Raider Nation, somebody said, hey, Bourbon Judge, why don't you check out Midwinter's Nice Dram, also produced by uh, um, High West Distillery. So I tried it, gave it a review, and I loved it. So you can't just say because you like one that you're going to like the other. But with that, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, folks. I love this label, by the way, too. I mean, take everything aside. My wife's in the whole uh, creative brand world. I mean, this is a beautiful label, right? That dark blue with the uh, gold, that just pops, doesn't it? It's pretty darn nice. Good job, Knob Creek. You guys are doing it right. At least from a, um, from a labeling perspective. All right. Let's go ahead and close this up. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get into the nose here, into the color. This is a beautiful, nice dark brown. So I did see, or I did read rather that they uh, do char it like it's like a char four. So that's the reason why you get that nice dark uh, uh, color to it. I, like, I love that darkness. It's beautiful. It's so nice, isn't it? Just look at that. Very nice. All right. Mmm. I will say it's nice being mid-March, being able to be outside in beautiful weather. You may hear some kids in the background. They're out there playing, having fun. That's a good thing, right? Always good to see kids outside playing. Even amidst the coronavirus, still at least a good outside to get some fresh air. All right. Beautiful, beautiful color. Very nice. Whew. From a nose standpoint, I like coming at the nose on the side. Just for me personally, a lot of times it brings out a lot of the different... Um, kind of helps to kind of understand like the flavor of what I'm what I'm smelling. So for me personally, I smell three things stand out. The first one is, oh wow, 
tons of honey. I get a little bit of fruit, almost like a pear. Mmm, that's really nice. Honey, pear, maybe apple. Mmm, very nice. And then a little bit of the oak as well, obviously from the, um, the, the aging process. Those are the three things that stand out. Honey, a fruit, either like an apple, pear, and then a third, a little bit of that oak, that little bit of spiciness, right? Mmm, very nice. All right, well, go ahead, folks. Cheers to you guys. Wow, at 100 proof, this goes down very smooth. Um, everything from the nose transfers to the palate. Tons of honey, I mean tons, overwhelming honey. Uh, tons of like fruit, but uh, not like, uh, there's tons of fruit, but not it's not like overwhelming, not in a bad way. Um, and then a little bit of that, that spice from like the oakiness, if you will, very, very nice. Wow, so again, this is 100 proof. Again, MSRP is about 60 bucks. I think I did pay $60 for this one. Let me go ahead and finish this off. Just make sure I didn't miss anything. Mm. Wow. Wow. Knob Creek. All right. Well, folks, I always tell you, honest judgment, right? Folks, is it worth buying? Is it worth leaving on the shelf? Do I need to run out and buy it? Is it a limited edition? Well, we do know this is the first time they released the 12-year bourbon. They released other age statements like the nine-year single barrel previously. This is the first time they're releasing the 12-year. Is it worth running out and buying? Is it worth, you know, maybe going to a couple liquor stores? The judgment is in. This is an absolute buy. Knob Creek, wow, wow, and wow. It just goes to show you, sometimes you don't have to always have like the pappies and everything that people go crazy about. This is a phenomenal, everyday, really good quality bourbon. It's a $60 bottle. I honestly think it's like, you know, it's up, I would probably even pay like $70 or $80 for it, to be honest with you. Great quality, great choice. Everything is just truly phenomenal from the nose to the palate to the finish, right? That's what we think about, nose, palate, finish. It's phenomenal, folks. I would definitely recommend that you go out and buy it. Don't go crazy, don't spend like $100, $200, nothing like that. I don't think they even sell for that price. Um, but is it worth $60 to $70 all day long? Um, I've already tapped into this one. I think I need to get another one just in case they do not release this going forward. I need to get another bottle. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Please guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching as you always do. Um, please make sure you tell your family and friends about the channel as well. Talk to you soon, see you folks, bye-bye.